you can be a scientist and you can have a laugh like that is completely fine hello and welcome to my first video on my new camera can you tell the difference i really can so when i got this camera i put out on my instagram stories what video would you like to be the very first one that i make using it and the winner was my phd journey so essentially this video is going to be me talking through my experience doing a phd as well as deciding to do a phd and a little bit about you know the application process and then a run through of my experience so far. I am a final year PhD student now and yeah it's all coming to the end which is really surreal. The four years has gone so quickly. I can't believe it's been four years. I think this is one for tea so if you need to pause go and put the kettle on and get a cup of tea. Everyone's journey is different, everyone's process is unique but I think it's sometimes really helpful to listen to other people's stories who are in a similar position to you or in a position that you eventually want to be in just to learn a little bit more about how they cope and their thought processes as well. So let's start at the very beginning. A bit of Julie Andrews there. So I want to be completely honest. I did not know I wanted to do a PhD. Now this was something that I found quite hard to admit in a way because I think there are certain people who know from day dot that they want to be a scientist and they want to do a PhD. I was not that person, not at all until just over halfway through my undergraduate degree I would say. So my undergraduate degree was in straight neuroscience. I'd learned a lot and I'd learned a lot about Alzheimer's disease which was the main reason that I went to university to study the brain in the first place and Alzheimer's disease has really affected my family so I think I wanted to do the PhD primarily to help towards Alzheimer's disease research because that was always my goal in some way to contribute towards that field. And then in my fourth year of undergrad, I had to do a master's project. So I found a lab which was focusing on Alzheimer's disease, of course. And when I started that project, I was a bit like, okay, I think I wanna do a PhD, but I've never really worked in a lab before. It's like your own domain. And I absolutely love that. You can be completely independent. You're using your thoughts and your knowledge to direct your everyday work. That type of lifestyle really fitted with my personality. I'm very independent and quite headstrong. I like to follow my own lead and the lab really gave me that. And then the final thing for me was my amazing master's supervisor who was a woman in science, an amazing leader. And I think seeing a woman in that position made me think, oh, well, I could do that too. I'm very outgoing, very extrovert. I like cracking jokes, you know, that is just who I am. And I just didn't get that vibe from anyone who taught me science during my undergrad. But then when I worked in a lab, there were people who were just like me. And I was just like, do you know what? You can be a scientist and you can have a laugh. Like that is completely fine. I think all of those factors together made me think that a PhD was definitely right for me. So then from there I went on to applications. Now I wasn't going to apply for any PhDs during my final year of undergrad because I was so busy. I spoke to my supervisor and said I don't really want to apply for anything this year. I think it's too stressful. And she said to me okay just pick the top three programs that you would like to do. If you get them great. If you don't doesn't matter. And of the three programs that I applied for I got invited to interview at one of them and that was the place that I now work at. So yeah I think I'll do a whole other video on you know interview techniques and interview questions. I think it was just really I was super passionate about the subject area and I was completely myself in the interview and that's something that I always tell people. Cringe now like but I did definitely make jokes in my interview. My PhD was a four-year program and they do a lot of these in the UK now and this is the first year you have three little projects like three rotation projects in different labs and each of them lasts about three months and then following these projects you pick one of them to go on to to do full time but you're basically like trying before you buy you go and test the different lab groups in your department and see where you fit best. Now I loved this system because it not only allowed me to see where I felt most comfortable in the lab so I did 
three different rotation projects that were quite varied in technique. My first one was genetics, actually epigenetics. My second one was very biochem heavy. And my third one was all cell culture. So I got to see what techniques I really enjoyed. And outside of that, I got to know the people in each of the groups that I worked in. And that is like priceless. That is priceless. My first year I really enjoyed because it was that experience of just being completely independent. And I know I had that slightly with my masters. Whereas with this, it was just like my sole focus, my job. I was getting paid to do this. And I was like, this is this is amazing. I would say though during my first year I did work too hard because first year it wasn't assessed but I remember like final year PhD students saying to me like why are you still here it's 10 o'clock at night and you're just doing rotations. I do wish I'd sort of taken it a little bit easier because I've learned now over time that burnout is something that really does happen and can come it feels like it comes out of nowhere but if you've been like consistently pushing yourself for months or years all of a sudden the tank's empty when you really need it and I think that's definitely happened to me. So then I picked my project. So I only had three years to do all my lab work and my writing. So it's much shorter in the UK than in other places like the US and in Canada. When I started my actual PhD project I found it really hard at first because with the rotations I was sort of given a short three-month project. You knew exactly what your end goal was. Now with my first year of PhD I had to write my PhD proposal which is your exact project alongside a three-year plan. Now going from a three-month project to a three-year project was pretty overwhelming. I was in the fortunate and maybe unfortunate position but my project was very open. I knew the protein that I was going to be working on but I didn't have the exact what is it about this protein that I want to really focus on. There was a lot of options, like too many options. And I remember that first few weeks when I was writing the proposal, I'd go home and I'd just cry and be like, I have no idea how to plan a three year project. And I had support from people at work, but I just felt very, very overwhelmed. But I did it. And I think going through that period of a few weeks where I really had to pick what I wanted to do and justify why I wanted to do it made me a better scientist. So the rest of my first year really was trying out, you know, different techniques and just finding my feet in the lab. That was definitely the way it was for the first six months. And I didn't think anything from that first six months even touched my thesis, maybe one or two assays. So I would definitely say that if you are wanting to do a PhD or you've just started one, don't worry if in the first few months nothing seems to happen or you're just like, all I've done is run the same Western block 15 times and oh. I think my work really picked up from after Easter of first year because I got like a positive, really interesting result. I know for me, seeing like a positive result, something that I thought was gonna happen that actually did happen you just get this buzz and you just want to work hard and from there it really did like kickstart crazy long lab days but I wanted to do those crazy long lab days because I was super excited about my work so yeah first year really was slow to start with and then I got a good result and all of a sudden it was full swing sometimes in science you don't really get those moments of wow that's amazing and that doesn't make your work any less good especially doing a PhD you know what you're doing here is documenting every single thing you do including optimization and making things better and negative results you can still get your thesis with all of your data because you're following your hypothesis and you're proving if it's true or if it's not so if we move to second year the gears went up a lot all of a sudden I was in that zone of data 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 I spent the whole year doing that I introduced a few new assays into my department so I couldn't really get help with a lot of stuff as well it meant I had to pull long days because I was still figuring different aspects of certain projects out. Yeah, second year for me was definitely the hardest because I really exhausted myself. I was going in every weekend. After Christmas of second year, I remember I was just in every weekend until like Easter. I didn't have a day off. There was one time I counted and it was over two months that I was in that lab every single day. And I would not recommend doing that. I, I think I'm suffering from it now still because I pushed myself so hard in that second year. I then did find it 
very difficult in third year to get that motivation but aside from all the hard work in second year I also like went on a conference so I went to an international conference in first year I forgot to mention I went to a conference but UK based so in London and then in my second year I went to a conference in Portugal but it was international that was really good experience got to network and meet a lot of people and then also in my second year what we do in the UK is an upgrade exam and that is about 18 months into your PhD you have to write like a mini thesis and it's like all your results so far with a discussion about where your project is going and then in my department we also have to give a half hour presentation on your work to the entire department and do like a mini viva setup with two examiners who go through your thesis and although that took me you know a long time to write it really has helped me now with the thesis because I know exactly what I need to write and how much work I need to put in to get it done I can see why it's worthwhile doing I thankfully passed and just could move on from that. I also brought in some new techniques into the department that no one had done before, which was really amazing. I mean, I feel like even after I leave, there'll be parts of me still there. It's a nice little way to, you know, give something to the department that I've brought a technique in made it work and then been like, there you go, this works now if anyone wants it. Now I'm in my final year and I am currently writing up my thesis. I was in the lab from August till March and again it was meant to be pretty non-stop I had a lot that I wanted to get done but I wasn't living in London for three of those months because of renovation work so I ended up having to commute from Oxford which from London is an hour and a bit on the train but by the time I left home got to the train station got the train got to work it was a two and a half hour trip each way so five hours round trip so I was having to commute in not getting into work until 11 o'clock not leaving work until seven getting home at 10 or 11 o'clock at night repeat so painful so painful and to all you people who commute I salute you it really really knackered me and I think with the hectic year from my second year where I was in the lab constantly I just suffered major major burnout I didn't want to go in anymore I just felt flat I didn't have any excitement about coming into work because I was associating it with this long journey and tiredness so it was really tough to like get by during that time because I rely a lot on my enthusiasm to give me motivation but I was still having to go in because it was that final push and I was like I need these results because otherwise I can't write my thesis but when I moved back to London thankfully the motivation and enthusiasm came back once I took that commute out the way I realized how much more energy I had like I was like oh my goodness I can think I can I feel happy it meant that my time just before Christmas and then from January to just before lockdown so March I was pretty much full-on again in the lab and I really enjoyed those last few months of work I'm really glad that I finished my lab work on a positive note. So now yeah I'm writing up my thesis. In terms of publications with my work the experiments that I've been doing have lasted how long? Like just under two years. So I've just like got all the results through from one of them and after I write my thesis the priority is to put that paper together to get it out but just the nature of the experiments that I've been doing for my thesis means that I haven't been able to like push papers out because the time courses are so long. I can't really go into details about that but when the papers are out I will definitely share them with you. So now I'm in this weird situation of lockdown trying to write my thesis but there are still a few bits and pieces that I need to do in the lab which I'll have to pick up at some point maybe August or September but I think I've got like 95% of my data so what I'm doing now is processing all of that writing it up and if you want to follow along with that journey I'm documenting it on my YouTube channel. My PhD project ended up being very multifaceted which is really good for my mind. I get bored very easily and I lose <laughs> concentration quite easily so I wanted a project that had lots of different things going on so when I go to the lab like no two days are ever really the same. I do a lot of cell culture work with lots of different cell lines. I also do a fair bit of biochemistry. I've really enjoyed my project because it was all quite new techniques and 
new for our entire department. So now all I've got left to do is finish the thesis, do a few bits in the lab, write up my papers, and then have my Viva, and I'll be done. So that is my PhD journey so far. I'm almost at the end of the road. There are still a fair few hills to climb, I think, but getting there and I would say on the whole my PhD has really taught me the value of independent work and being an independent with your thinking. I think that's the best skill that I've taken out of this is to trust my own process and my knowledge because you have to lean on your own knowledge a lot to make your next steps and I feel like now I'm at the end of that I've got a really nice project and it all flows really nicely because of the decisions that I made during my time in the lab. I've obviously made like loads of amazing friends, great connections. I've really enhanced my skills in the lab. I think my public speaking has become much better. My ability to communicate science obviously has gone from like the floor to like good, I hope. Altogether, I have really enjoyed my PhD. There have definitely been times where I've been extremely stressed and extremely down and had to lean on people around me to get me through those times, but I would do it all again. Thank you for watching my first video on my new camera, and I hope you enjoyed learning about my PhD journey. If there's any questions about that, you can ask me in the comments or you can message me on social media. I will be happy to answer. And if you wanna follow along with the last stages of my PhD journey, which is writing up my thesis, subscribe to the channel because I will be posting regularly about that on there. I shall speak to you soon.